Alzheimer's disease, characterized by memory loss, dementia, and the loss of bodily functions, this serious neurodegenerative disorder has caused the decline and the eventual death of millions. The classic hallmarks of this disease are plaques and tangles that spread throughout the brain. These structures contribute to the death of neurons and the decreased brain functionality of Alzheimer's patients. Today, we will be focusing on the formation of beta amyloid plaques, and more specifically, a particular protease involved in the release of amyloid beta, called beta secretase 1. Normally, amyloid beta precursor protein, or APP, is cleaved first by alpha secretase, followed by gamma secretase. The released fragments are thought to benefit the functioning of neurons. However, beta secretase cleaves APP in a different location. After subsequent gamma secretase cleavage, amyloid beta is released into the extracellular space of the brain, where it can aggregate and form harmful plaques that can spread. Beta secretase is a hot protein of interest based on its essential role in the formation of beta amyloid plaques. Beta secretase is a transmembrane protein and it can also exist as a dimer. Its catalytic active site is located within the extracellular domain of the enzyme, and it is here where peptide bond cleavage of APP occurs. Since this enzyme is involved in peptide bond cleavage, it is classified as a protease, but more specifically as an aspartate protease. Two critical aspartate residues, ASP32 and ASP228, help coordinate a water molecule that is involved in the cleavage mechanism. This is typical of any aspartic protease. Two other key structures reside in the active site of beta secretase, the beta hairpin loop and the 10S loop. The beta hairpin loop is also known as the flap, and it serves to assist in the binding of the substrate. The 10S loop serves a similar function. In addition, many specificity pockets are present in this area to ensure the tight bonding between the enzyme and its substrate. The mechanism of this protease activity is nothing more than a simple acid-base reaction. The two aspartate residues coordinate a water molecule via hydrogen bonding. One aspartic oxyanion abstracts a hydrogen atom from the water molecule, effectively activating it as a good nucleophile. The water nucleophile then attacks the carbonyl carbon involved in the peptide bond, forming a tetrahedral intermediate. The resulting oxyanion kicks a pair of electrons down to regenerate the carbonyl group, breaking the peptide bond in the process. The aspartic oxyanion is subsequently regenerated. Now, unlike the serine proteases that we discussed in class, no covalent bonds are formed between the beta secretase's side chains and the substrate. For this reason, the fragments can exit the active site freely. As we said before, beta secretase plays a major role in the formation of amyloid beta, which aggregates to form plaques in the brain. Because of its critical role in this process, it has become a huge target for the efforts of Alzheimer's drug development. The most common drug strategy against beta secretase is the use of a competitive inhibitor. While developing a competitive inhibitor is not easy, successful inhibition has occurred. This is a virtual representation of beta secretase bound to one of these inhibitors. If we zoom in, to the active site of the enzyme, we can see that the substrate is occupying its active site sufficiently. In addition, aspartate residue 32 and 228 are participating in hydrogen bonding here and here. For this reason, the protease mechanism of the aspartate residues coordinating a water molecule 
will not be able to occur, and APP will not be cleaved. At the same time, this inhibitor is interacting with the specificity pockets and the flap of the enzyme. The combination of these factors makes for an imperfect, yet stable, enzyme substrate complex. These inhibitors have been proven to lower the buildup of amyloid beta. However, they have also been proven to have significant side effects. According to a study published in 2014, there is evidence to suggest that beta secretase plays a key role in the development, maintenance, and repair of the nervous system. Therefore, the formation of plaques is now thought to be due to an imbalance between beta secretase and alpha secretase. Since a balanced amount of beta secretase is healthy, but too much beta secretase is unhealthy, drug therapy should have the goal to regulate beta secretase levels instead of eradicating it completely.